short sermonette today. I don't want to take up any of Mr. Smith's time. At least that's my excuse for the short sermonette. Okay, Matthew 12. If I can find Matthew. Matthew 12 and verse 1. And that, at that time Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn. And his disciples were hungry. And he began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. Now, here Christ and his disciples were walking through a field of grain, and they began to pluck some of the grain to eat. It says corn here, but it could have also been heads of wheat. The word that's translated here merely means a head of grain, which stands out on the stalk, but that's, that's neither here nor there. Verse 2, it says, But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, your disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. Now, where does the scripture say that? Well, nowhere. <laughs> this was a law of the Pharisees. It was a law of their tradition. Not the law of God. And this is one of the great confrontations that Christ, or Jesus, had with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Jesus said, you say so and so, but have you not read what the scriptures say? Christ used the scriptures, for as they used their own traditional laws, he did the same thing with the Pharisees as he did with Satan the devil when he was tempted. Satan said, if these stones, you know, if you're Christ, if these stones, you can turn these stones into bread. Christ said, it is written in the word that man cannot live by bread alone. So he always quoted scripture to uh, confront them when they were using their own laws. Verse 3, he says, but when he, he said unto them, have you not read what David did when he was hungry that, and those that were with him? How he entered into the house of God and did eat the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them that were with him, but only for the priest. And that was a, a law. The showbread was for the priest to eat only, not for anyone else. But uh, you can read the story back in the Old Testament where David and his men they went to the temple, they didn't have any food, they were hungry, and they did eat the showbread, but they were not held guilty by God. It says, or have you not read in the law how that on the Sabbath day the priest in the temple profaned the Sabbath and are blameless? And they did. They worked harder on the Sabbath than any other day of the week, and the Sabbath was supposed to be a day of rest. But sacrificing all those, all those animals, if anyone here has ever dressed out an animal, you know what a job that is. <laughs> and they didn't have just one. They had many animals to dress. He says, but I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple. But if you had known what this means, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. You would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. A lot of people think God is a strict, unyielding God. And while God does expect us to keep his laws, even he will sometimes, on occasion, bend his laws if there is a legitimate need to do so. <coughs> Even in the Old Testament, Numbers chapter 9, concerning the Passover, 
If a man was unclean for some reason, or he was on a journey and he couldn't get back in time to keep the Passover and present his offerings to God, then God made allowances for those people to observe the Passover the 14th day of the second month. So if there is a legitimate human need, God sometimes makes allowances for those needs. So there was nothing wrong for the disciples going through this <coughs> grain field, plucking some grain to satisfy their own hunger. You just don't harvest the whole crop on the Sabbath. Now that would have been wrong. But when they left the grain fields, Jesus went into the synagogue to drive this point home that there is nothing wrong in taking care of legitimate human needs on the Sabbath, should it come up. Verse 9. <clears throat> and when he was departed from there, he went into their synagogue. <coughs> and behold, there was a man which had his hand withered. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days that they might accuse him? And he said unto them, what man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep, and if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? How much then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days. <clears throat> he wanted to make this message plain to these people in spite of the consequences that it would bring. Jesus is saying to the Pharisees here, he says, look, a human life is worth far more than the life <coughs> of some animal. But you people, you place more emphasis on a sheep than you do a human <coughs> life. Because that sheep or that animal, that's money. <coughs> that's money to you. And you're placing more emphasis on that money than you are a human life. They would break their own laws when it came to money. But they were so eager to condemn someone else for doing good for a human being for nothing on the Sabbath day. And you know, human beings haven't changed much down through the years. It's still the same today as it was back then. Everything boils down to money for most people. And there's nothing that human beings won't do to get it. Verse 13. Uh, we're just talking about the man with the withered hand here. Verse 13. Then said he to the man, and he stretched it forth. And it was restored. He told the man to stretch forth his withered hand. He did. And it was restored whole like the other. And most of you here today, you've seen people with a withered hand. I went to school with a fellow like that. He, he had had polio, I believe. And his hand was all drawn up. And also, one of his legs, was, he was crippled kind of in one of his legs but he'd get out there and play ball with the best of us <laughs> and he was he did pretty good but we know what he's talking about here this man had a withered hand and he was probably dependent upon other people maybe his his deformity may have made him self-conscious a little bit and, and feel inferior to other people. He may have even been envious of other people with normal hands. I don't know. But there was one thing that it did make him do, and that was to seek the only person who could actually help him. It made him seek Jesus Christ and look to God for help. It caused him to go to the synagogue or church to worship. His affliction drew him closer 
to God. And you know, that's, I feel that's one reason God allows us to suffer sometimes, in order to draw us closer to Him, to make us feel how vulnerable we really are in the flesh. He wants us to place our dependence upon Him. Now, I have a hiatal hernia. And about two weeks ago, I was eating a piece of fried chicken. I love fried chicken. And it hung up right there. And it wouldn't go down, people. And it had to come back up. <laughs> and for four days, I couldn't eat a bite of anything. Barely could just get a little bit of water down in four days. I thought I was going to have to go to the hospital and get an IV hooked up to me. I was so dehydrated. And believe me, when you can't eat for four days, it'll draw you closer to God. <laughs> you will pray a whole lot more than you normally do. So I know what an affliction will do. It will draw you closer to God. Well, Jesus, he was always compassionate towards the sick, as we read in the Bible. And he still is today. He is always moved by the needs of other people. And throughout the New Testament, you can see that, of the pe all the people that he healed and, and so forth. He knew when he healed this man, he would be criticized for it. He knew it would just further their, or it, that it would further unite his enemies. But he told the man, stretch forth your hand. He did, and it was whole, just like the other one. And back up in verse 12 there, we've already read the last part. You know, Jesus said, Wherefore, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath day. But what is it in our life that we can compare to this man's withered hand? What is our withered hand? We all have one. We all have one. What is it in our life that we keep hidden, hidden, you know, as this man probably would have done with his hand? He may have kept it hid or his coat down over it because he probably made himself conscious. What is it that makes us feel inferior? As human beings, we're always trying to put forth our good points in order to to smooth over and hide our weak points. To hide our withered hand. So what is it? Is it fear of some type? Is it an untamed temper? An uncontrolled tongue? Jealousy? <laughs> is it a feeling you don't receive the lack of attention? You think you should receive or should get. What is our withered hand? The list could be endless. But the fact is, we have a withered hand. So we as true Christians, we need to stretch forth that withered hand. We need to stretch forth our sins. We need to stretch forth our failures and sincerely rep repent before God of the things we know that aren't right in our life. And we all have them. We need to stretch forth that withered hand. And if we do, God is still in the healing business. If we stretch forth that withered hand, He will make us whole. 